Hi, Dave with Align Therapy here. I wanted to discuss a recent research article that came out, uh, and it's probably going to be a little bit of a controversial topic here on YouTube um, as far as scoliosis and spinal deformities go, but I wanted to bring it up because it brings up some interesting points in the treatment of scoliosis and spinal deformities. So uh, the research article is titled Spinal Manual Therapy for Adolescent Idiopathic Scoliosis, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Randomized Controlled Trials. So that's a mouthful. Basically, they're looking at spinal manipulation, so crack in the back or chiropractic adjustments or whatever we want to call them. They're looking at that with adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, so scoliosis in kids that are growing that we're worried about it progressing. And they're doing a systematic review and meta-analysis. So they're doing a review of the research studies that are out there. So when they do a systematic re review and meta-analysis, they, they search for a specific term and then they determine which uh, research articles they're gonna include in the, in the meta-analysis of that based on certain requirements. Um, whether the and this one one of the requirements was that they needed to be a randomized controlled trial so as as we look through that so, sometimes the the tendency is just to jump to the to the conclusion and read what the authors concluded but i i wanted to go through and see how many studies there were because this is a common common question that we get uh is should I see a chiropractor for my scoliosis? Or would chiropractic help my scoliosis? Or I'm seeing a chiropractor and he's telling me that he can fix my curve. That's a red flag, by the way. Um, but is that actually supported in the literature? So I wanted to see how many randomized control trials they found. So if we look down in this study, they found four randomized control trials. So in all those trials, there were 213 patients, so you know about 50, uh, 50 patients in each trial-ish. Um, two studies had standalone spinal manipulation experiment group, and uh, three of those study, studies also had identical conservative treatments in the control group. So, so they were controlled. Uh, I'm not going to get way deep into the specifics of these research articles, but first of all, there's only four of them. Uh, that's kind of a, um, a a caution to me that there's only four randomized controlled trials looking at spinal manipulation for scoliosis. If we compare that to like the Schroth method or PSSE or, or scoliosis specific exercise, four is a very small number. As far as scoliosis specific exercise goes we have a lot a lot more i'd have to do a, a a search currently to see how many randomized control trials there are but there is way more than four to support uh, scoliosis specific exercise so if we look at the conclusion their, their conclusion is interesting they say there is insufficient data to determine the effectiveness of spinal manipulation limited by the very low quality of included studies so the low quality of the included studies were um, their controls weren't very good and, and things like that make a, a study low quality. A few, few patients in the study and if there's a high risk of bias uh, also makes it low, low quality. High quality studies with appropriate design and follow-up periods are warranted to determine, to determine if manual therapy or spinal manipulation may be beneficial as an adjunct therapy for adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. So that tells us that we need higher, higher quality studies. One of the issues with these studies is a short follow-up period. So they didn't have a, a longer follow-up period that looked at this. And so how can you tell what actually happened with that if it's, if it's not long enough after the treatment? Um, and it, it's, their, their study design, their follow-up periods, it was just low quality. And so the, the authors of this study said, currently there is no evidence to support spinal manipulation in the treatment of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. That's a pretty strong term, a pretty strong uh, statement that there's no, um, no evidence to support it. Uh, we could leave it at that and, and 
that would probably get me some interesting comments on, on this video. But uh, if we think about what I've used spinal manipulation for in adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, because I do um, mobilize and manipulate uh, the spine when I treat patients occasionally. I'll do it more for increasing mobility if they're really tight, or mainly I'm doing that to relieve pain. So I'm not saying that spinal manipulation can't be used with, with uh, scoliosis. I'm not saying chiropractic doesn't help with scoliosis, but it's mainly more the pain aspect. If you're having pain with scoliosis, then uh, spinal manipulation can definitely be helpful. But there is no evidence to support that spinal manipulation changes the curve or changes the progression of the curve or stops the curve or fixes the scoliosis. Uh, there's no evidence to support that. I would love for someone to, uh, to do a comment on this video and and put what evidence there is out there to support spinal manipulation. I'm not talking about case studies. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, just one treatment, you know, one-off treatments that, wow, look how well my scoliosis did with my chiropractic treatment. I'm talking about a study, a randomized controlled trial study that is of high quality that supports spinal manipulation or chiropractic adjustments in the treatment of scoliosis. Uh, it, it just isn't out there right now. And so if you're doing chiropractic adjustments and your chiropractor is telling you that he's fixing your spine or this is gonna stop it from progressing, I would be very hesitant to, to go along with that because we, we don't see that supported in the literature. Not all treatments are supported by, by randomized controlled trials, but if we're looking at something like scoliosis that's progressing in adolescence, we should be doing things that are supported by, by research. Uh, at least a little bit of research, you know, it doesn't have to be huge uh, studies of thousands of people, but at least have good study design and, and uh, at least have support in those trials. This article actually references an, art references an article that uh, I think what came out a few years ago that looked at spinal manipulation and and the effects on scoliosis curves. It came to the same conclusion, but it it added uh, something into the conclusion that in the research that they were able to analyze, there was a high uh, high incidence of bias. So bias is when uh, basically when you're wanting an outcome to happen, and it can be influencing. Uh, that to have that outcome happen. So there's a high incidence of bias in the studies that that one looked at and this study also looked at those studies that this one did as well. Um, anytime we have bias in in research, you know, we it's hard to to believe what the research is the the conclusion is. So that's something to look for. Uh, Maybe there are techniques out there that I don't know of that haven't been researched that do fantastic with scoliosis and reduce progression of the curve. But if it were me and it were my, my child that I was looking at to, to get treated, I, want, I would want uh, research-backed treatment and I would want someone who really is specialized in treating scoliosis. There are some chiropractic uh, treatment techniques that incorporate other things like scoliosis-specific exercise. Um, one of the, those is the CLEAR method. And, and when I did my, my C's approach, my scoliosis exercise approach, scientific exercise approach to scoliosis training, the C's approach, um, there were uh, quite a few chiropractors in that class. And, and I like that they were looking at it not just from a spinal manipulation aspect, but they were also getting trained in scoliosis-specific exercise that has been shown to be effective and is supported in the literature. So if you're being treated, this is the big takeaway, if you're being treated for scoliosis or spinal deformities or anything that requires a little more specialized care, make sure that the treatment that you're getting and paying for and spending time and energy and money on is backed by research. Uh, I would even go as far as if you're going to someone and you have questions about that, ask them about the research. Ask them if they can show you 
what support there is in the literature. And hopefully they'll be able to go back and just grab some studies and, and show you why they do what they do and why it's supported. If you came to my clinic and you asked me that, I could give you probably 10 randomized controlled trials that I could email you, boom, just like that, that support what I do. Um, and there's more and more coming out. And that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. So big takeaway, make sure it's evidence-based, make sure that what is being done is effective and that um, you're getting the treatment that you need. So hopefully this was helpful. This was a really interesting article to review. Uh, and I'm sure I'm going to get some comments from this one, but uh, I, I welcome those. I think it's a good dialogue to have the, why uh, those treatments that we're, we're doing are effective and supported. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'll review some other articles. Hopefully they're helpful, and hopefully they help you to see how you can get the best treatment possible. It may not be here at my clinic at Align Therapy. It may be somewhere else, but... My main goal is to increase the awareness that, that there's more that can be done in scoliosis treatment than just wait and see. We don't want to just wait and see because there's something we can do that's supported in the literature. It may not be spinal manipulation, but as we do more research, things could change. But right now, that's what we see. So uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate you watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.